pizza guy. Uh, don't be crying off your This is place that. Go, big things. It would be nice if the birdie was nice while I, I do my prayer to sit on my shoulder, but he probably bite me. I don't know if Mike will up. He won't make another week here. He can't hold the job. You ready to start? Yeah, I'm Bill. ready. Bill. Pizza? Oh, yeah. I'm okay. Have a seat. All right. Uh, the uh, speaker that we were supposed to have tonight is, is had to um, hold off until next time. He's going to be speaking in two weeks. He had to do some more research and um, he wanted to be fully prepared. So uh, Gary's been preparing this ham radio uh, operation uh, presentation for a while now. You have your license, right? Yes, I do. Okay, because I can't let you speak a little. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been thinking about doing this and uh, I heard the questions are online and everything, so it's, uh, communications is going to be paramount. We're going to need a hand. Yeah. When the collapse comes, communications are going to be paramount. There probably won't be any cell phones or, or landlines working. Um, the only thing that's going to work is a CB radio and a ham, ham radio, right? Yeah. So nothing further I give you, Gary Dunn. All right. Praise the Lord. You want to pray for us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's pray for it before we get started. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of Jesus to heal the land, to heal the American spirits and souls. To reveal the truth to America, uh, to see that your light is a true light and your way is the only way. And we want to thank you, Lord, and praise you for this gathering today, for the opportunity for your will to come through my friend's mouth, so that your way will be the most perfect way, Lord. And we ask you in Jesus' name to be there in your way, and that God's will be done. Amen. 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 All right. Well, what I want to talk to you about tonight is the uh, subject of ham radio. Uh, just a little bit about my background. I will confess right up front. I'm, I'm a newbie at this. Uh, I've had my license for a couple of years, but just haven't had a lot of time to really, you know, practice it. Uh, so there's a lot about, uh, you know, the more technical aspects of him that I'm not, you know, just not really that familiar with. And, uh, I will say that uh, programming, uh, you know, ham radios can be a little bit of a challenge uh, if you're not real technically oriented. So it's always good to, you know, partner up with somebody who is a, uh, you know, who's experienced in the field who can, you know, can help you along so you can become proficient in the, in this uh, craft. You now, uh, ham radio does have some nice uh, advantages. And basically, you know, it is an alternate means of communication. Uh, you know, cell phones go down, landlines go down. Uh, this is a backup. Uh, certainly not invincible by any means, but you know, the uh, the whole idea, or one of the principles about prepping that makes you know that that is important to keep in mind, you know, is redundancy. You know, you don't want to be relying on one way of surviving. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's it. You know, you want to have two or three different options. Like you want to have two or three different ways of of uh, having light or, or heat, you know, if the grid goes down. And the same thing is true with communications. And uh, ham radio is one of those options. Now, pulling some stuff off of the net, there's not really a, uh, at least when I've been able to determine, a, uh, a technical uh, version or, or how the term ham came about. Uh, it's also an amateur radio because, you know, you're not have a, a commercial broadcast license, you're not uh, uh, putting up programming, you're not soliciting advertising, or anything like this. This is strictly, you know, one-to-one uh, -one communication. Or in some cases, it could be group communications, but 
but it's not meant for uh, to be uh, promoting programming or uh, advertisements. But uh, basically, you know, the ham got started way back, uh, well, the term ham came, got started way back in the 19th century during the uh, telegraph era uh, when there would be uh, some repeating uh, communications going on. And then when, uh, you know, the first radios came about, you know, people were experimenting and whatnot, you know, there'd be issues of some, you know, some broadcasters uh, drowning out others. And, uh, and those who were being uh, overpowered uh, would tend to get a little bit uh, upset about that. And so they came up with uh, an expression, uh, the hands are jamming you. And the people that really got into amateur radio uh, decided to uh, adopt that as a, you know, as a pride of honor that, hey, that's really what we're about. It's, uh, you know, it's hamming it up or just, uh, you, know, you know, getting attention. So there's really not a technical background to uh, to what that's about. Uh, the uh, Getting started with ham radio is actually a, a pretty easy affair. Uh, you don't have to be a technical genius to do this, but it you know, does help if you're inclined to be that way. Uh, but, you know, it's not like you've, got a, you've taken uh, you know, a year of college courses or anything like that to do it. Uh, basically, anyone can do it. Uh, and uh, there's a few classes of uh, licenses uh, that are available. Uh, there's what they call the technician's class, the uh, general class, and then the, uh, the extra class. And the, basically what each of these licenses do is they give you, uh, as you step up the ladder, they each gives you a greater uh, range of frequencies that you can operate on. Uh, because there's some frequencies that you, know, you can really only just you know, talk very locally, like you know, if you're in a park, you know, uh, right. working on an event. Uh, there's others uh, that you can communicate with using local repeaters. And still others that you can communicate with people uh, around the country or around the world on, uh, you know, bouncing signals off of satellites. So, uh, depending on, you know, your license and the frequencies that you're on, uh, that's, what, uh, uh, that's what you can do. Uh, getting started with it is very easy. Uh, you would uh, get a uh, you get a book. You can get these at the library. You can order them on, on, on Amazon or you know, at a Barnes and Noble. I almost said orders, but they're out of business. But uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, and what they do is there's a set of a hundred questions uh, that uh, that are in a question pool. That's at you know the, uh, they're at the back of the book, and and on the actual exam you'll take you'll you'll answer. There'll be 35 of those questions just pulled at random that'll be on there. And you pass, you know, you, you, I think if you get 30 out of 35 right, I believe it's the uh, threshold. So if you get 30 out of 35, you know, you pass the exam, and then the uh, Federal Communications Commission uh, gives you your, uh, uh, your, your call sign. And, uh, and with that, you're, uh, right, you're free to uh, broadcast on the air within the parameters of your, of your license. And uh, the, uh, by the way, my uh, call sign is uh, KC9SCT. In case anyone wants to try to raise me out there, <laughs> uh, so that's my call sign. Uh, so the FCC will get that to you. Uh, the FCC, I might add, does not take too kindly to people trying to broadcast on these frequencies without a license. So uh, unless you want to have a, a run in with a fence, uh, definitely not recommended to to do that. And um, basically, the the whole thing, even though it got started off as a as an amateur thing uh, with people experimenting with radio, when radio was uh, a fairly new communication, uh, it really got uh, you know the basic uh, premise behind him, you know, did become public service, looking uh, at uh, different uh, you know uh, public service events like you know races and things of that nature, providing communication support to uh, police and. Uh, uh, fire departments and whatnot, and uh, and so uh, that's really where you know what the hams really uh, that's essentially what they do is public service. So sometimes police departments, you know, e, uh, EMTs, you know, just you know if they've got a lot going on, they just don't have enough communications uh, 
uh, apparatus backing them up. So that's where you know the radio operators can come in and provide a lot of uh, uh, to fill in a lot of gaps. That, you know, those guys just you know, aren't going to have you know, the numbers to, to manage. Uh, so that's uh, uh, a really important thing you know, that we can do. It's, and it's a great way to get to get some practice in in, uh, in using the medium as well. So you know, you're not just you know shooting the breeze, but you actually are doing something productive, learning your equipment, learning how to do it, uh, and and getting some experience. You know, working in a an emergency or potential emergency situation. Uh, ham radio operators were a, uh, a big um, contributing contributor uh, to uh, during the uh, crisis involving Hurricane Katrina. Uh, they played a very big role in helping uh, local law enforcement rescuers to uh, you know to do their jobs, and uh, which would have been very difficult if uh, not impossible to do. Uh, is that thing still rolling? Okay. Uh, yeah, still doing uh, uh, otherwise. So that's really what uh, you know. Uh, that's a, a very important aspect of, uh, of what you know, ham radio is about: is, uh, is communications. And so sometimes it's actual emergency situations, weather things, or earthquakes. Other times it's uh, you know races, marathons, uh, that type of stuff. Just so that uh, there's a backup in place. So. Uh, those are the three types of licenses. Uh, you know, it doesn't cost that much. Uh, when I took my exam back in 2010, I believe it was, uh, it was only uh, uh, it was only like 30 bucks to uh, to, be able to take the exam. So it's you know, so pretty much anybody can do it. And uh, and then uh, you know you're good to go. And then you know you can move up to get the other licenses. Uh, as quickly as you as you want to, you know. There's no time restrictions or you know number of hours that you got to broadcast or anything like that. So uh, you know you can pretty much uh, you know get your you know, all three of your licenses in a fairly quick uh, time factor. Uh, one question that I'm sure was going to come up is the issue of uh, Morse code. Uh, it used to be that uh, Morse code was required, uh, but it's not required any longer, uh, including even for the uh, the. the Top grade uh, extra license, so uh, I mean it's available if you want to learn it, but it's not a requirement uh, that you have to pass a Morse code test. They they used to uh, used to do that up until a few years ago, right. so it could be kind of a neat thing to uh, get into, and you know certainly good to record, good to know. You know if there is a, a, a true grid down situation and you don't want to be broadcasting voice, um, Morse code would be a way of uh, of, uh, of bringing that about. So basically, uh, we kind of go into next. Uh, what are uh, there's some uh, uh, some types of the equipment that is that is out there. Uh, like with anything, uh, this can be a very simple affair, or it can be something that's uh, uh, you know could become a really big time uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, you can spend thousands of dollars on equipment. Uh, from uh, you know, little handheld radios to units that you have in your car to uh, you know units that you have in the uh, uh, at home. You know, I mean, there's people that've got you know a den that's just converted into a radio room. They've got all kinds of receivers down there. Uh, they'll have a you know a big antenna um, outside, so forth and so on. So uh, you know, so you can really uh, you know this this can become. A specialty area in prepping in and of itself. Even right. if you don't do anything else, you just go nuts over this stuff. And uh, so, uh, but there's a lot of uh, you know, but is uh, you know, however much you want to put into it, what you'll you know, it's what you'll get out of it. And uh, equipment ranges, uh, price ranges. Uh, you know, your little handheld receivers, uh, tra you know, transceivers as they call because they both transmit and receive. Uh, you can pick up a good, well, you can pick up a new one for about uh, 220 250 bucks. Uh, obviously, there, there are used versions available as well uh, that you can get for less money than that. And I'm sure older versions um, don't are, you know, have quite the uh, uh, the tech, uh, the technology down as the newer versions do. So, you know, like, there's like newer, uh, more current versions of ham radio. Uh, you get into a digital communication, voiceover, you know. Those types of things, uh, you know, data streaming, uh, older models don't do that, but they're probably also a little easier to operate as well because they don't have all the electronics involved. So, uh, you know, so you can get started for about $250 to uh, you know, $300 for a good handheld. Obviously, your, you know, your you know, home base units or something you have in your car is going to run you uh, more money than that. 
Uh, again, you can buy used uh, or new. Uh, one thing which I didn't look, and I kind of wish I thought of this now, uh, hand video equipment stores are not quite as prevalent as you might think they are. Uh, when I lived in Chicago, they had one, uh, well, they didn't have any in the Chicago area. They, I had, actually had to go up to Milwaukee to, uh, to, buy, uh, to buy my gear, uh, which is about an hour and a half drive north of Chicago. Yeah. So, um, you know, so you might have to do a little digging as to where there might be a hand, uh, you know, sort of sales equipment in wow. this area, or, you know, you can go online as well. Right, right. Uh, so, there's a, let me see here, I'm just going to get a little bit more into technical stuff. Um, so, some of the common bands, you know, radio bands are out there for him, are 70 centimeter, 2 meter, 4 meter, and 10 meter bands. Um, and, uh, these are some of the more common ones that are used, especially for you know, technician class, which is your entry level license. Uh, usually, your broadcast uh, strength on these is you know maybe about to you know two to up to about five watts, so it's below the threshold of a you know commercial radio station. Uh, but uh, but uh, you know with uh, the help of uh, satellites and repeaters, depending on you know who you're trying to communicate with, you know you can talk to you know you know people all over the you know the country or the world. Uh, on these things. Uh, one thing, especially with the handhelds, you, know, you do need to keep in mind is to, uh, uh, you know, they all come with little rubber ducky, you know, like little rubber ducky type antennas. You're going to want to get something uh, a little bit more uh, effective than that. Uh, and you can get these aerials, they're, they're, you know, they're maybe about this, this tall, but you can, uh, you know, unscrew the, uh, the rubber ducky antenna, bolt on the, uh, uh, the, uh, the dipole antenna. Uh, mounted on a cookie sheet or some other metallic object, and that will greatly increase your your range capacity uh, with the radio. And uh, yeah, my how about grounding the? Uh, what, what, what what would grounding do to it? Uh, would it also increase the uh, the receiving and the transmitting? Grounding is just uh, you know well because with a if with a handheld it's going to be running on batteries, so you don't okay. have to worry about uh, about grounding that. Uh, the main thing is that's going to affect your, you know, your communications ability is going to be the quality of your antenna. And, of course, where you're going to be setting up, too. Uh, you know, for example, if you're using a repeater that you know is north of here, uh, you, know, you want to try to get in a position where you know, there's nothing blocking or there's a minimal amount of blockage between the antenna and the, uh, and the repeater. Because you know, you know there's, is there a lot of those repeaters around? Oh yeah, is yeah, it? yeah. Matter of fact, you can you know, go to a, a ham radio store, or probably maybe even you know go to a, a Borders. Or, oh, I did say that Borders is out of business. Uh, Barnes and Noble or uh, some other bookstore, and uh, they have there's a repeater guy that you can buy. Oh really? It has repeaters throughout the country. So if you you know going on a road trip. You got this little, oh, okay, we're driving through Columbus. Okay. So you know. that's what gives them such range. Yeah. All the repeat or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I and, mean, and depending on the frequencies that you're broadcasting on, some of them, you could also you know, bounce off the satellites as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, when, you know, when it hits the fan, mm -hmm. do you think. What's that, my guy? You know how they say they're going to knock out, the, they're going to blow up the bridges? Do you think they're going to go after these repeaters? It'd be tough. It'd be That's tough to go after the repeaters, but you know, yes, sir, there's other ways they could. I mean, they, listen, they use them too. And the, yeah, yeah, and well, and, and the well, they, they pulse could you know knock out anything that's electronic. So you know, there goes your ham radio, repeaters, <coughs> ham radio equipment. Oh, the re that'll knock out the repeaters too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? EMP. Yeah. Yeah, EMP will knock out pretty much anything that's electronic. If it's well, I mean, if it's really it, old, if it's it's really a, old. A Faraday cage or a uh, yeah, my yeah. bar bag. If, right. If, if, the ra quiet, yeah, if you have the radios in a Faraday cage, it'll protect it, but you know, it's not going to do much good if your repeaters have been knocked out, or, yeah. or you know, depending on, again on the frequency you're trying to broadcast, the satellites so have no been knocked out. If there's no repeaters here, how far? Depend on the range, depend on the terrain. Depend on the terrain on the and when we broadcast you from it. I mean, just like a CB almost. Yeah. yeah. You're down to a CB. So you may as well just. I, I got another question. Uh, would you be able to hook a linear on it if there's not that many repeaters around? Uh, you could. Yeah, you could probably do that. Would that increase the transmitting and the receiving? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that would uh, that would uh, do the job with that. As, uh, but uh, you know, but again, if there's no repeat, if the repeater's been knocked out in a you know some type of a catastrophe EMP you know attack or something like that, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot that you can you know that you can really do. Uh, without the repeater, you, you probably got a range of about uh, you know five. You know, again, depending on the terrain and where you are, you know, you got a range of about you know maybe five or six miles. You know that you can uh, broadcast with just a handheld rubber ducky antenna, no repeaters. Yeah. So that's uh, you know, but that's why you know, they do have all these other. Uh, op well, I don't want to say options, but that's why they have the repeaters and today, you know, satellites, so that, you know, you're not limited to that local range. You might think, well, yeah, if you're good our situation, you know, are you really going to care about communicating with somebody that's a thousand miles away? You might. You, you, you might want to know what's might. going on in other areas of the country. You know, right. even though, way more, more on a practical, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, you just want to communicate with uh, your, uh, you know, your, you know, that's three, two or three miles away. Right. Yeah. How about a how about a beam antenna? Can you hook a beam antenna on that? Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing that you just have to make sure that the uh, jacks are compatible. You know that you, you know that you, know, that you can uh, screw it on to uh, screw it out to the set. Mm. Uh, we, can make, we can make them compatible. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's adapters too yep. that you can. Yep. Uh, you know, right up. Yeah. That yeah that you can certainly use. But um, let me see if I. Uh, See, but the idea of the uh, EMP, though, or, or even a solar flare, or solar flare. flare. Okay. Yeah. But uh, my, my mom actually pointed out the other day. Yeah. She found we had a their power was knocked out for a couple weeks mm -hmm. in, in her house. We right. had a limb go down, and it's a, well, it was a few days. I'm sorry, it was a couple days. And she said, you know, I, I would have liked to have had a radio. And she searched, and she found one that was a crank. It was an AM, FM, and I believe it was a CB radio. It was all cranking, no batteries. Yeah. You got to crank it up, crank yeah. up the juice. So something like that, I believe, would survive an EMP. Right. Or even, and I was told, if, if you disconnected the batteries or unplugged electronic devices from the wall, right. that they, they would, in effect, survive a magnetic pulse as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. I mean, if you had a truck or something, yeah, and you just put just the battery out, took the battery out, yeah. that all the electronics would still be sound. If you know, but who has a spare truck to park with, you know, or, 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 or anything, or like, you know? Yeah. So just the metal around the truck would protect it, huh? Well, if there's no current go through it, yeah, there's no magnetic pulse to distort that. You know what I mean? Because oh, okay. the, the magnetic pulse will, will kind of like. Like grabs the magnetic, the the, the elect electric, and it, it, it yanks it. You know, it's like kind of like grabbing water in a pipe and yanking it up. Yeah, it distorts it. Huh. Yeah, it, it, I, I may be a little off there. I'm not sure. I'm not a right. <laughs> engineer, well, no. but this. Uh, is. So basically, let's see. Okay, we're talking about frequencies, and as I said, there's a lot of different ways that you know ham radios. Now, there's a lot of technical upgrades that have been done thanks to you know the age of the internet and whatnot. Yeah. You know, so there's uh, you know there's digital communications. Uh, they also have a, a feature up here called uh, Auto Patch, which is where you can actually make a phone call with your ham radio. Yeah, I've uh, seen. Oh, you can make a phone call. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You, you gotta be a little careful with that. Like, uh, you know, it's gotta be you know strictly. They have business related, for lack of a better way of putting it, you know, because uh, wow. you know, it's FCC, you know, right, right, right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think but, that will matter when there's a, uh, <laughs> well, when yeah. there's a meltdown in our economy. Right. <laughs> right. I just say, but it, it is available. It is yeah. an option uh, when things are. Uh, just with the newer models or? Newer models. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure what you could, uh, other than just basic broadcast, what you can do with, say, something that's 20 years old uh, that's out there, because as I said, I'm fairly... I got, a, I, I got a Motorola handheld. Okay. I don't know anything about it. I got it at a garage sale for like five bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if it works. The recharge... should bring it up. Huh? The rechargeable battery might not be good. I don't know. Wow. So, yeah, but uh, that's... Uh,
pretty much about uh, you know. With, uh, so there's a lot of different options you can go. But obviously, you know, in the, you know, an emergency situation with some of these, uh, you know, fancier features are not available. Yeah. You know, it's going to be your basic broadcast abilities. That's you know, that's going to uh, the matter uh, the most. But um, how does that work though? So. Uh, you can make a regular phone call with a hammer. I mean, how does that work? Uh, I haven't, as, and I haven't done that, oh, okay. so I'm not really sure exactly. I just want to. Yeah. Know, I mean, if, if I'm just thinking, if the landlines are done and yeah. down, and the cellular service is down, it's not going to matter. That still work? Yeah. No, that that wouldn't. I mean, no. I mean how you, who are you going to call? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, phone calling with a band, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's something oh, I have to. Uh, what <laughs> like prevents them from, from, from using phone from? Phone from phone. Uh, you using one without license? Well, the thing is, if you're caught, I don't like. I don't like to apply for anything. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, in that case, that's why CB radios is what. Uh, yeah, I have you, a couple. CBs. If you if you don't want to, you know, have a license, you don't need a license to do CB. Well, you could do yeah. a lot. But uh, ham, uh, ham, you do well if you get caught. And you know, and there could be you know some people out there like uh, you know a local ham radio clubs that you know like Turn you know, can can check out like hey this this, this license uh, this qualifies both yeah 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 you get fined for that so you have to work, yeah. like when you broadcast you give them your call that oh yeah yeah oh, right. Right. You, yeah you need to do that at the beginning and the end of they your can't keep you from listening now right huh? they can't keep you from listening oh no no you can listen in any time. Yeah. Right. But you can't transmit. You can't transmit you with, unless you have the uh, uh, a, 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 a uh, yeah, license and hence the call sign. Yeah. Can the, can police scanners pick up uh, oh, yeah, if you don't scan scan ham radio? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. The next level. yeah. Oh really? Yeah, and it used to be it used to be that you know of course you know you you know you know we could just go into a radio shack and buy a, a scanner and scan police frequencies, but now you know. Uh, police departments are they're, they're encrypting their communications, so not quite so easy to, uh, to do that. Uh, for what I infer from people you know, who are into that uh, to do. Uh, because, you know, they, they, you know, they, you know, they, you know, the criminals could probably be, you know, could just easily uh, see, you know, listen to police scanners and, you know, and just don't want to, don't want to, you know. Uh, How long ago did you get your license? Uh, 2010. Okay. Yeah. And you just study the book yourself? Or? Yep, you just study the book. Uh, they, uh, so some ham radio clubs also have uh, what they call uh, uh, ham crams, which is basically where you can go to a class. They'll, they'll take you through the book uh, to prep you for the exam. But uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just study the book on your own. Uh, what I found to be effective is I would just look up the questions in the back because it gives it the, the uh, you know, maybe a pool of about 100 questions that the, 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 they'll draw from, oh, and, okay. and which 30, maybe 35 will actually show up on the test. Oh, okay. And so, therefore, um, you know, you do that, and so, like, I would just read the questions and then I would just go through the book and look up the answers, and, you know, because that's really yeah. helpful with memory oh, okay. uh, to, uh, to do that instead of just going through the book. You know, learning all these terms uh, that you know maybe you don't know anything about, right. and then you get to the questions, and I'm like, yeah. So, <laughs> so since you got the questions there, look. So up you the have all the questions that, that that could be on there, exactly. and, the, and the answers. You're right. Yeah, the answers are right. I, in the book. I can pass that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that, that's that's meant to be easy for people to get. Yeah. So, yeah, just uh, study the questions. You know, go through the book, you know, match up the answers. Uh, and they'll ask 35, of, they'll pull 35 of those 100 questions, and as I said, I think if you pass 30 out of 35, you know, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, so it's real easy. Yeah. Is there any way that you could soup up a, uh, a CB and put extra frequencies into it and I, juice it up to... Yeah, no. You can I don't, do, you if can there is, I don't booster. know. Yeah, they sell boosters. Yeah. No, you're talking about linear. You're talking about frequencies. No, frequencies? No, I think yeah. CBs, I think you're... you're, you're, you're I think you're limited on frequencies on CBs. You probably, I, I know a friend that always used to juice up CBs and put extra frequencies on. Is he in jail now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, let, let me just go over a little bit here with the uh, on the licensing. Um, see, the first. All right. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't go into as much detail as I thought it would here. Uh, okay, I've gone over three different types of licenses, uh, which I can get any time. 
uh, Morse code not not communicated and not required. Uh, and uh, oh, the uh, the book you can also you can order, also, uh, order right uh, not only get that you know go to the library and check it out, but also uh, there's a, a national network that's uh, for amateur radio operators it's called the uh, American Radio Relay League A R R L. And, uh, if you so if you go on their site www.arrl.org, uh, you can uh, you know, order a manual from there, or you can just uh, download you know copies mm -hmm. of the exams. Uh, the manual is only $24.95, uh, plus shipping and handling to do that. How so, much is your license? License, uh, the technicians, the, the technicians class. When I took it three years, I guess it was three years ago now, uh, it was uh, $35. What it is now, I, I'm not sure. But, so, but uh, it's meant to be the, the, as, you know, as wide open to the public as possible, so yeah. you know, it's, it's not like you got. If it's wide open, why would you need a license? That's uh, well, that's FCC rules. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Under, under what codes or things can they tell you? Right, for a shakedown that would apply to me to get the license. Why couldn't I just get the license without? See what I'm saying? Yeah, well, see, yeah. I mean, why spend $35 if I don't have to spend it? Well, well, the thing is, you have to have a, a call sign, which the FCC assigns. And that's part of the process of getting the license. You can't have one without the other. You know, it's not, it's, uh, ham radio is not like CB radio, where, you know, you don't need to have any licensing requirements. Ham radio is a little bit more uh, restricted. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. But how do I find out what laws and regulations apply for me to get this license once I apply for the license? Whether the, the code you still is the FCC website. Yeah. It'll be on there. Yeah, FCC. And yeah. plus, you know, once you get the, once you get your license, I mean, you're in. You know, because the FCC gives you the call sign, and you know, you're good to go. <coughs> you like to renew or nothing? Uh, it's good for uh, ten years. So, yeah. Is there different classes for a ham radio operator license? Uh, there's, uh, well, there's uh, different classes for the the, the exams. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I mean, not for the exam. Like, let's say you have a driver's license, class B, C, and A. Right. Would they have that type of license with? No, the uh, licenses uh, would be uh, technician, uh, technician license, general, and am and uh, an extra. Those are your classes of license. What's the amateur? Uh, well, technician? Yeah, uh, the yeah, technician is your entry level. Amateur. Yeah, yeah, well, the ham radio is also known as amateur radio. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So sometimes you'll hear, you know, refer to it as amateur, it's the same thing. Uh, where, where'd the ham come from before you, it, you started it's, telling it's me? It's kind of a, uh, an informal expression when the radio... Hey. Yeah, I, I know I see about half, hey. half our people here aren't, aren't even uh, over here, so... Yeah. Um, the ham is uh, it's just when the early days of radio when when people were experimenting. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they they had the rather annoying habit of jamming up uh, official frequencies like you know ship right, right. and uh, you know shipboard radio operators would get a little upset about that, and so they they came up with a perjurative term: the hams are jamming us. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So there's no technical. Meaning that's the word the word ham radio comes from. Yeah, and it was an insult. Yeah, it was an insult. Now it's kind of turned into a source of pride. So, hams are jamming. Yeah, yeah. So, so the licensing is pretty easy. Um, you probably should, you know. <coughs> to really, you know, again, depending on your technical proficiency. I mean, I started studying for the for mine for about a month, probably a good month and a half before I took the exam because I I wanted to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're real technical at this stuff, or if you know things about radio communications already, yeah. you know you, you you know you're not going to need to do quite as much uh, studying on that. You got an antenna and tower and everything here, huh? Uh, no, I, I just have a handheld uh, transceiver. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I haven't gotten quite into it that to that extent. But do you, do you use it? Uh, I haven't used it since I've uh, since I've been here. Yeah. And in Chicago, you had to leave the city to go find one. Yeah. To find a store that sells the equipment. 
Oh, uh, really? I mean, yeah. I mean, if you want to buy new equipment, I mean, and, and again, you can buy stuff online. Uh, they don't have Radio Shack up there? Wow. Well, they do, but they don't sell them at Radio Shack. Really? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I didn't know that. It's Radio Shack. They should have radios. Uh, yeah, they should have all kinds of radios. <laughs> yeah, no, thing. not that. We, because uh, uh, I remember I was looking up, uh, you know, ham, you know, ham radio sellers in, in the in the old pages and. I didn't really see anything, and, and so I uh, did a little, I do a little digging, and yeah. the nearest one was uh, an hour and a half away. So, did you get all the questions right? Uh, uh, I got, I failed it the first time. So, did you? Yeah, because I was going through a lot of, you know, personal stuff at the yeah. time, so I really wasn't focused. The second time, you know, I, I think I only missed two or three questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I retook it, and uh, you know, uh, also too, uh, you know, if you want to get, well, really get. Grounded in this, it's definitely a, a good idea, and this is also something I haven't done since I've moved here. Uh, is uh, join a ham radio club. Uh, yeah. There's a list of about uh, probably about 10 or 15 that are within a 25 mile radius of here. I believe the closest one to here would be uh, New Kensington, and uh, you know they usually meet. You know, maybe once a month or twice a month, depending on how active they are. Now, the club that I was a part of uh, out in the Chicago area, uh, uh, and not all ham radio clubs, you know, have this designation, but it's what they call an ARES club, A R E S. I can't remember off the top of my head what it stands for, but it's basically uh, a club that's really commi uh, committed to uh, emergency. Uh, you know, helping out in emergency uh, situations. You know, storm blows through the area, uh, or just uh, you An know, airplane, a small little airplane crash. That could be, yeah. Or, or you know, say you know, there's a the, a ten a ten k race going on. You know, and you know, ham radio operators provide you know, additional communication support. You know, to you know, first responders because sometimes you know. They can't be everywhere, and so you know, ham operators would be the eyes and ears to say, "Oh, hey, you know, there's a runner uh, that uh, fell down out here." Uh, you know, because whereas a, you know, a cop or an EMT is not going to be able to see everything that goes on. So I've worked a couple, oh, a couple of those events, but uh, Aries is really we want to really get more into the, the emergency communications aspect. You know, a hospital's on fire, plane crash, a weather disaster, or earthquake. Etc. Etc. Uh, finding an Aries club would, would would be the best way to do that because they'll because they also provide uh, more specialized training where you know you learn you know how you know and I know this is uh, uh, the probably one of the anathema uh, uh, government departments here but FEMA uh, you know you learn you know how they operate and what their terminology is and what their expectations are. Uh, because, you know, PAMs do work alongside. The, the idea is to be a public service to the authorities when the authorities just can't be everywhere uh, at once. Of course, you know, again, if it goes down, this then becomes a backup way of, way of communicating, you know, for us. But, uh, but in the meantime, you know, you have to, you know, to learn the skills, learn some emergency procedures, uh, you know, this is a great way to go. Mm -hmm. what, you know what FRS radios are? I've heard the expression. I'm not. I haven't really, you know, read off much on them. So they got like anywhere. Some of them will have like one through fourteen or one through twenty-two channels or yeah. more. Right. And they could go at least two, three, or a, so an X amount of miles. Yeah. Those would be good to have too. Or yeah, good. and it's like with anything with, with emergency prepping. You know, having a, having redundancy is is important. So you know, don't just rely on one means of communicating. Have you know, have two. You know, have a, have your ham radio. Have your ham radio license. Have a CB. You know, so yeah. Yo, do you have no. one? Oh, okay. You just <laughs> it's tossing they, something. They, they call it Aries, though. The Aries is the god of war. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's just a, that's just an acronym, and then again, I, I don't remember off the top oh, of my head okay. what it stands for. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's see if there's anything else I have here. Um, um, when I was in Chicago, they also did uh, weather training uh, as well, like uh, weather spotting. That was really interesting uh, to go through.
So, uh, yeah, so it's always a good idea to be able to have some, and again, you know, it's not just with radio communications, I mean, you know, if you're getting into farming, uh, you know, it's kind of useful to still look at the skies and actually have some sense of what, 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 the, what the color means. What's covered, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times people will see, you know, Weird cloud formations, and they think you know, you know, there's a terrible storm coming. It might not be as big of a deal, and sometimes it's the other way around. Right. So um, yeah, so that's uh, another way that we can go on this. Um, definitely would recommend joining uh, ARL as well, American Radio Relay League. The membership is, I think, is only like twenty-five to thirty dollars a year. But you know, but you know, you can get the publication sent to you. That uh, deal with the issue, you know, that deal with you know equipment and you know just anything to do with radio communications. Uh, so if you want to blow up on your technical knowledge of the field, uh, you know, belonging to ARL is, uh, is a good way to go on that. Um, in terms of equipment out there, uh, there's you know, there's a lot of different manufacturers. Uh, probably you know, the couple of the, the top ones are. Yesu, which I believe is a Japanese make, and uh, and, and Kenwood, Kenwood, the same Kenwood that manufactures the stereo. How about how about Motorola? Yep, yeah, Motorola. Yeah. So there's a lot of different brands. Uh, Kenwood and, and Yesu are two of the ones that I I've seen that people tend to like the most in terms of you know just overall quality and, of equipment and whatnot. You know, and my little handheld, which I didn't bring with me today, yeah, is a Yesu. Uh, so, and uh, so, as I said, it's not a big deal to get started with this, and uh, and certainly it's a, it's a excellent uh, backup to your uh, prepping efforts. And uh, so, let me just see, if, let me see if there's anything else. I'm gonna pass out. Go pass out. Uh, uh, listen, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this is a listing of, uh, of affiliated uh, of, uh, AR, of uh, ham radio clubs that are in the area. Uh, so uh, you just you take those and just kind of you can kind of get a sense of where where they're located and whatnot. These are all the clubs in the area. Yeah, within 25 miles. Yeah, what I did is I punched in uh, my zip code in Monroeville, and that's way. Uh, and that's the way to uh, print it off. Uh, I'll see. Uh, oh, yeah, Gary's got it. I only made one copy. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Hello? Let's see. <coughs> I'm interested in that. That's cool. Yeah. I know a friend of mine works at the. He, he got his uh, he got his license and everything. He keeps. Kept trying to talk me into it. I might have to go hang out with him, see how he does it. Yeah, it's yeah. If you know somebody who you know who's experienced it, by all means. And the thing is too, um, when you get into this, you, uh, uh, a good thing to look for in, in, in somebody who was a, uh, uh, you know who was also into the, the ham radio is uh, and there's a well we call them elders. And an Elmer is basically someone who's experienced in, in the craft and they can, you know, you show, you know, they can help you program your, uh, the repeaters into your radio, that can, you know, help you get comfortable with broadcasting and just all the, you know, the different nuances of, uh, you know, of how, to, of how to do it. So look for an Elmer or a mentor, because same, you know, look for someone that could, like your buddy there, that would be, that'd be perfect. And, and, you know, he could probably show you some things, you know, because you, you don't have to, I mean, just to listen in, you don't have to have a license. You do have to have it. I think that's what he went to school for was was uh, radio. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to go to school for this. Right. But right. Um, right. Well, I mean, I, to, to, for a more broad, you know. Right. Like, what was it? Just ham radio. Yeah. It was like a, everything. Yeah, I mean, pretty much anybody. Two, three hours of studying, probably. Yeah. Again, depending on how, how oh, yeah. good I'm, I'm not real technically oriented, so I needed to, you know, spend more time with this. Yeah. Now I have a friend of mine who thinks, who doesn't who claims he's not real technically oriented, but he he studied the book the night before and he passed it the first time too. You know, he has technician's class. Yeah. I was jealous. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, let's see if there's any. I don't think I have anything else on here. Um, but uh, definitely check out uh, the ARL website, uh, ARL.org. Uh, and also, too, you know, what it's worth, 
uh, every year they have a big ham fest the convention in uh, Dayton, Ohio. And it's, uh, oh, okay. yeah, it comes up around the third week of May. Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. So it should, it should be something fun to check out as well. Yeah. So, but um, does any, are there any other questions, comments, or anything? Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. I had a little bit more. I would, I would like to brought my, uh, brought my radio in yeah. along with the book, but since I know we can be. Yeah, this was kind of last know, I minute. think I'm going to try to find some time to do this this, this uh, spring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That is sad. It's, 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 you have the book? I, I, they changed the books uh, shortly is before. Is it online, maybe? Uh, PDF? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you go on, go on, go to the ARL website. Yeah. They should have, a, a, and I don't know if you can download the book. You might have to order it, but it's only, that's like 25 bucks. Yeah. You have to order it. Uh, the library may have a copy of it too. You may go to the library and get it. Okay. Uh, but see, they'll change up the question pool from time to time. So the book that I use to get my my in my exam, uh, they change uh, everything around like about four or five months later. So yeah, yeah. So the book that I would bring in, you know, would be somewhat out of date. I mean, the, you know, there's a lot of the information so relevant, but but the questions are probably not going to be there. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like I said, I'll go hang out with my buddy, get him to break the yeah. Did you get to try to do it too? Well, like I said, I was telling a friend about a work he went to. He went to school to learn radio. Yeah. I mean, more like the production, direct, and you know, all that, all that stuff. And he, he got it when he had radio. He has set up and everything. He wanted to start his own amateur radio station. Right. And uh, so I'm like, uh, maybe I will have to make him set it up and show me how to do it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Mike, did you, does that shut off? Or no, is that still, that still, still recording. No, you, you can, yeah, you can turn that off. Okay. Oh, okay, I'm Thanks, sorry. Gear. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, no problem. That was good. You short notice.